Don Piper was relieved that the pastor's conference he had been attending finished a little early on that Wednesday in January of 1989. As associate pastor and just appointed minister of education at a Houston area church, he was a busy man. I was thinking about that night and also that I was going to be preaching the next Sunday morning in three services. Within minutes of leaving the retreat center, Don drove onto a bridge spanning a lake. Before I exited the other end, a, uh, a, a tractor trailer truck owned by the uh, the Texas Department of Corrections uh, crossed the center stripe and hit my, uh, my car uh, head on. Um, I was instantly transported to uh, Heaven's Gate. I did not see a single person that I did not know. They were uh, relatives. They were friends who had died in high school. Uh, they were teachers. Uh, they were people that I had seen and known all my life who had uh, gone to glory. Uh, and they were smiling, they were embracing me, uh, they were welcoming me, uh, they were in the process of taking me uh, in through the gate of heaven. Looking over the heads of his friends, Don saw a looming pearl gate. The gate of heaven was a magnificent uh, edifice, the one that I saw. Um, it looked no less than, uh, uh, than a giant, uh, a giant gate that looked like it had been sculpted uh, from mother of pearl. In all honesty, as awesome as the, the sight was, the sound was even more amazing. Uh, I heard literally thousands of praise songs. They were all praise songs. and I couldn't really see anything. I was so preoccupied with the people around me. Couldn't really see anything, but you could sense this hum of wings just kind of hovering all about you as if you were being ministered to by angels uh, and that they were observing this whole episode. Uh, While Don stood at the I gates of heaven, this man stood on a Texas highway by Don's lifeless body. Pastor Dick Onorecker of Klein, Texas had also attended the pastor's conference and came upon the accident moments after it happened. EMS personnel told Dick that Don was dead. Very candidly, I, it was as though I was compelled uh, to stop and to pray for him. The Lord just impressed on me uh, very emphatically, very urgently that I was to pray for him. And I walked over by the door, um, great physical damage on, on the outside, um, and I laid my hands on him and began to pray for him. As suddenly as his journey began, it ended. Don found himself back in his crushed vehicle, staring up at a tarp thrown over him by medical attendants. First conscious memory was, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. I was singing, and I'm thinking to myself, why am I singing this song? Yeah, I'm in the dark. Uh, I knew it was about noontime when the accident happened. I'm in the dark, I'm singing, and I'm holding a hand. And I'm thinking to myself, what on earth has happened? Dick had begun singing hymns to Don. The Lord impressed on me not only to pray for him, but that there be no internal injuries and there be no head injuries. Um, and then we began to, I began to sing, and all of a sudden I heard him singing with me. The prayers and love of family and friends pulled Don through four intensive months of therapy, numerous operations, and infections which on two occasions almost claimed his life. I like to say that I was brought back by popular demand. Uh, people prayed me back from, uh, from the gates of heaven. People prayed me back from death's door. Uh, I am here because people ask God for me to be here.